In this video, I want to talk about the numbers of users that you are likely to have access your FileMaker server at one time and how that somewhat corresponds to the various instances that FileMaker is making available to us as part of FileMaker Cloud. So the first takeaway to understand is that Amazon AWS has a tremendous number of instances or types of virtual servers that they have available up for public access. Now, even though there are probably 50 or 60 different types of virtual servers available, FileMaker has narrowed the list down to about eight different servers that they feel are appropriate for FileMaker customers to use. And this helps narrow our selection of servers, but it also helps keep us out of trouble preventing people from selecting grossly inappropriate servers that are not in any way tuned for FileMaker use. Now what you see on screen is a free FileMaker file that I give away. It's on our website and the link is down below somewhere. And you can use it to easily take a look at the instances that FileMaker has specified are for use with the FileMaker cloud and to easily compare the prices on a monthly basis for each of these types of servers. In fact, if you go to most places on the internet, most places don't have a good comparison that show you the average monthly bill that you will pay Amazon for a specific server. Now, keep in mind that the prices do fluctuate. And as a result of this, we actually have an update button on the top of the page that will allow you to download the latest pricing from Amazon. So for the time being, we can only choose from these eight instances right here. Now FileMaker has kind of prepared a loose document that talks about the number of users. Um, and really from our perspective, we're not talking about licensing so much. We're talking about the numbers of users that we're likely to see access the server at one time. Um, I know this gets into a conversation a little bit of concurrency and FileMaker is trying to get away from the licensing of concurrent connections. That's why they've gone to the FileMaker license for Teams because that allows you just to say I have 10 people in the company so we buy a 10 pack or we have five people that need access to it so we buy a five pack but here are some ballpark numbers that FileMaker has kind of worked up for us it's important to note that one to use Amazon you're going to have to have at least a five pack of connections so even if you have one or two or three people that only need access to this the minimum entry point for you is a five pack and we cover this in the licensing video that being said, a five pack would probably be best served by a T2 medium or a T2 large. If you have five users and they're just doing minimal sort of access to like FM starting point or another starter solution, then a T2 small might be okay. We have received mixed information about whether a T2 small can drive WebDirect users with any sort of performance penalty. Notice once again, a T2 small is one CPU, two gigs of memory. It really doesn't have the horsepower, in my opinion, to drive WebDirect with any sort of authority. So you're going to be left looking at T2 for Go and Pro, just a handful of people, or a T2 medium, which will drive fairly well, Pro and Go users and some WebDirect at the same time. But once again, FileMaker, I think for the most part, would guess or, or figure that five users would be targeted towards this medium. If you have a beefy database that has a lot of chewing and calculations and that kind of thing, and most of us have seen databases like that. But if you use FM starting point as a benchmark, a CRM system with lots of moving parts, but it's been specifically optimized for scalability and for really having a minimal impact on the FileMaker server itself. So I use that kind of as a benchmark. I think a T2 medium uh, for five users is good. You could use a T2 large, especially if you buy it on a one year or three year commitment so you can take advantage of reserve pricing. That's a good deal right there as well. The C4 extra large and the M4 extra large, I think are really overkill for five users. I don't think that's appropriate here. However, this is all very subjective. Once again, the database and what kind of things the users are doing, if they're constantly running heavy duty reports with lots of calculations and stuff, maybe a C4 extra large is appropriate. If you have 10 simultaneous users that are gonna be active in the system, I think the T2 large is going to be a much better spot. A C4 extra large would be great if you can afford that cost. Now we get into 25 users, as you can see right here, 
And I think at 25 users, simultaneous users, I really think that you're going to be looking at a C4 extra large, right? And I think the C4 extra large and the M4 extra large will both drive up to probably 50 or 60 users, once again, using a fairly lightweight solution like FM Starting Point. As a reminder, the C4 extra large and the M4 extra large, according to this chart, are pretty equivalent with the exception of the RAM memory on the right side. But I know that's kind of a bogus comparison. And once again, this is kind of an incomplete chart provided by FileMaker. Because if we look at it over here, we can see the C4 extra large actually has half the memory, but the processor on board, and it actually doesn't even show it right here, but the processor on board is a lot hotter. It's about 20 to 30 percent hotter performance per gigahertz than the M4 extra large. So um, there is some benefit to this here. In fact, you see that right here under the compute units, the ECU units. These are kind of a standard benchmark that Amazon uses to allow you to kind of compare things. And it's really impossible to say that one unit is enough for a certain number of people, etc. But it's good as a reference point. So you can see that the C4 high CPU extra large is a hotter processing system because it gets 16 units. The M4 extra large, which is slightly more money, is 13 units. But there's a trade-off in the RAM memory. So I'm not clear once again the difference in these two. FileMaker obviously puts the C4 extra large above it, but that could also be due to the fact that the costs are a bit higher for the M4 extra large. So in my opinion, um, going back to our chart here, that when you get into the uh, 25 range, C4 extra large or M4 extra large is good. When you start getting up to 100, you really have 100 people simultaneously beating on the machine. If we go back to our processing right here, an M4 4 extra large, we see we get 53 and a half compute units, which makes the M4 quadruple extra large much hotter, both in terms of the processing and in terms of the RAM that's available. So going from the M4 extra large, the M4 4 extra large, way hotter setup. So as you see uh, from the chart here, that uh, FileMaker is going to allow you to select the one that's most appropriate for you, and you should feel free to upgrade it or downgrade it as necessary. Now also keep in mind that the robot DB, which is part of this automated process that keeps an eye on things, will monitor the amount of CPU that your instance is using. And if you go over 90% for a measurable period of time, and I don't remember what it was, I thought it was a couple minutes or so, you will get an automatic email notification letting you know that you're pushing the instance pretty hard and you might want to think about upgrading to the next larger size of instance. So once again, this is kind of the target area that FileMaker is saying based upon the number of connections. Now, if you buy 100 connections and you're only going to have 10 or 20 people access it at one time, then you should be able to go with a potentially smaller instance. Certainly the C4 extra large would be fine. It's on the low end there. This 100 group, uh, for me, the 100 group would best be served by, once again, the M4 2X, 4X, or 10X. And it just depends upon the budget because the budget here gets somewhat prohibitive, at least in my humble opinion, when you're running a server that costs you a solid $1,700 a month. And even if you get a smoking discount on that and you do a three-year partial payment, you're down to $693 per month. That's a truly robust server. That's going to support departments within organizations. Um, we're talking pretty beefy stuff here. In fact, I've never actually set up a virtual server this big before. Most of the time, if we have a server this big, we used to build them as an on-premise server, either Mac or Windows, and park the server in the customer's office. So once again, that's still an option. The on-premise server is still an option, but depending upon how many simultaneous users you have, you're going to want to choose the correct server. And in another video, we're going to dive into various conversations about upgrading and supersizing the server as necessary, as well as saving money by using additional prepaid years of commitment or what we call a reserve instance.